This is Econ Solutions looking at production and cost theory in the Unit 3 topic content. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is what production is. So it's the process that converts inputs of factor services into outputs of goods. So essentially what that means is you have your factors of production of land, labour, capital and enterprise and these are the inputs that go into your firm, business or enterprise. And from that, you hope to get goods and services into the market. So that's essentially your production process. So the reason it's important to note the production process is when defining the difference between short run and long run production and cost theory. Because short run explains that it's at least one factor of the production process is fixed. So those factors of production, when one of those is fixed, you're dealing with the short run. When those are changeable, you're dealing with the long run. So in short run production theory, which I'm going to talk about in this slide, there's a few key things to note. So the specialization division of labor and how that leads into law of diminishing returns. So specialization and division of labor came about famously by Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations book, where he talks about a pin factory. And he explains the idea that one worker making a pin will not be that efficient as there's lots of different processes to making that pin. There's lots of different production parts and therefore he might be able to make one pin a day as he won't be a specialist in each of the areas of grinding it, sharpening it, etc. So he argues that if you increase the workforce and also specialise different workers in different parts of the pin making process you will become a lot more productive and create many more pins than if each worker was just making the whole pin and that's the idea behind the specialization and division of labor so I'll show you on a diagram how that increases the output of them and the marginal product so as you can see from the diagram if you increase your marginal productivity, your output increases as your number of workers increases. But it also increases by a more than proportionate amount. So therefore, your specialising and your marginal productivity has increased per worker. So your marginal productivity has increased. However, you will reach a point where because you're throwing variable factors at fixed factors, your marginal returns will begin to fall. So if you think about it in terms of a pub, if you had a lot of bar staff and a certain size of bar, yes, adding more bar staff would increase the amount of drinks you can serve, but at a certain point, the bar staff will be getting in the way of each other. They might not have enough taps to pour, and then from the addition of more workers you're just going to become less and less productive and that's when your marginal productivity starts to fall okay and this from this point onwards is the idea of the law of diminishing returns so your specialization and division of labor explain why initially your marginal productivity is increasing and then your law of diminishing returns explains why it will have to eventually decrease and that is the short run production theory. With short run cost theory, it's a similar idea in that if you're producing less, then your costs will rise eventually. So if you start producing less because of the law of diminishing returns, your average variable costs will increase because with each unit you are outputting it's actually costing you more because you have to provide more labor. So therefore your average total costs will increase and your marginal cost curve will look like this. So as you can see, initially your costs start to fall as your workers become more productive. However, when the law of diminishing returns sets in as you're adding variable factors to your fixed factors, then eventually your workers are going to become less marginally productive and your marginal cost, your cost per unit of output, um, will increase as well. And that's why the marginal cost curve is shaped like this. So 
they're the short run production and cost theory and we're going to move on to the long run which is also broken up into two different parts. So as discussed earlier the long run is where all factors of production can be changed. So in long run production theory it's important to note what returns to scale is. Now this describes how output changes when the scale of all factors of production change in the long run. So they divide it into increasing returns to scale, decreasing returns to scale, and constant returns to scale. Now what that means is, as you increase your variable factors, so if you increase your plant size or your labor force, the amount of output you gain from doing that, if it's proportionate, it's constant returns to scale. If it's more than proportionate, it's increasing returns to scale. And if it's less than proportionate, it's decreasing returns to scale. So essentially, what it's saying is if you doubled your plant size, so your land, and you doubled the amount of output you had, you'd have constant returns to scale. If you more than doubled it, you'd have increasing returns to scale. And if you less than doubled it, you'd have decreasing returns to scale. So it's to do with the proportionate increase or decrease once you've changed a factor of production. And that's long run production theory. So in long run cost theory, the key concept is economies and diseconomies of scale. So for this, you've got to understand the construction of the LRAC curve, so the long run average cost curve. So as you can see, the short run average total cost is demonstrated here by a curve also. And what that shows is the diminishing returns to scale on each part of the curve. Because as you expand into the long run, as you change to each curve, you essentially have a new fixed factor of production. Because if you change your firm size, that means you've moved into the long run, but at that given time, you've then got a fixed factor of production in your firm size. So at each point along the curve, you will have your short run average total costs because you will have certain fixed facts of production. But in the long run average cost, there's economies and diseconomies of scale. So what that means is essentially that you can save money initially the bigger you get. So the bigger you get you can save on logistical costs as you have the infrastructure for things like that. So the more you increase output your costs actually won't increase proportionately. They won't increase as much as you'll have the infrastructure to implement sort of logistics of moving your good from place to place or the machines you use you can use the same machines to produce more goods and therefore your average costs sorry, your average costs will fall as you can see here however there comes a point again where you reach your optimum which is at this point here and then you start to get diseconomies of scale and what that means is in situations where perhaps your firm gets too big and certain managers are not not looking for profit, they're looking for revenue, they have different objectives, or they get so big that there's not enough communication between management and workers, or workers get demotivated, all these different things that come into um, increasing your firm size, you can get to diseconomies of scale, and eventually your costs will rise, and that's why it's shaped like this. However, it can be shaped in different ways depending on the type of business you own. So this is essentially just outlined the short run and long run production and cost theory and the key elements of that.